Well, good evening, it's Charlie ZL2 CCM. Well, the radio has been um, reconfigured as a um, super heterodyne receiver, and I just wanted to sort of run through that now uh, with you and I guess provide some, um, some initial observations. Uh, at the moment, it's still uh, mid afternoon, so uh, the grey line hasn't come in yet, and there's, there's nothing on 40 metres. So what I'm currently doing is I'm just using um, an MP3 player there with a phone uh, into the radio, uh, commercial rig here, uh, and then just with, with keying it here into a dummy load. Um, I'm on a really low power setting, and then just using that to provide a, uh, a test signal for the rig. Password. And that's what we're coming now, through okay, there. So that's what he said, and I just do address it head on. So uh, let, me just, um, let me just unkey that, and, uh, and then we can talk about... Yet. Where we going? Okay. okay, so that radio is unkeyed, um, and let's let's go from there. So we'll just unplug that. That was just a little dummy lead there, just with a little wire going, um, sort of in the in the vicinity of the uh, the dummy load. Okay, so uh, um, just got a few test switches in there, which I'll talk about. So at the moment, the RF is coming in. I've got two relays here that I've I've got prepared ready for later on. Um, the first relay here is the antenna. Um, switch over relay, so that's going to be switching the antenna between uh, transmit and receive. Um, so that's what that was for. Uh, and then another one over here, which um, switches the 12 volts hot coming in uh, between transmit and receive. So at the moment, everything's on relaxed. There's no circuitry here to key it. Um, this is purely in the receive mode. And then just a, a very simple sort of um, bus bar, so to speak, down here. Uh, T for transmit, and then 12 volts, which is always on, and then R for receive. So for those circuits that require uh, 12 volts only on receive, that's where the wires go to, uh, and same thing there for, for transmit. Um, so the RF is coming in through the antenna switch, and then it's straight into that uh, bandpass filter that was built um, a couple of videos back. Um, that's going then into that uh, little 10 dB amplifier, the, uh, the 3904. Um, this switch here is purely for test, uh, which we'll look at in a sec, which is just switching the output, which is then feeding into the, the first mixer, uh, between the output of this amplifier and then just a 50 ohm resistor. Um, I think we can just sort of see there, uh, that should do the trick. So that RF is coming into the, uh, the mixer there, it's an ADE-1. Uh, the local oscillator, um, is coming in from the SI5351. Um, as you can see there, I've, I've remote mounted that uh, away from the um, the circuit board that was brought up um, before, uh, only just to uh, reduce the, the length of the, the RF cable. So I thought I'd just try something different. So that, that um, brown and white wire there are carrying the SDA and the, in the SCL signals um, through to that remote mounted uh, SI5351. So clock um, zero is coming out and that's providing the variable frequency oscillator for the ADE-1. The output of that um, is a 9 MHz signal. Um, and what I might do right now is just, just um, quickly have a take a look at this. So uh, what I've done there in software for the, the, the variable frequency oscillator and the beat frequency oscillator, um, I'm using an XF92A, that's a, a 500 ohm uh, crystal filter with 30 picofarads uh, that has a bandwidth of 2100 hertz so here goes our desired 40 meter signal so notionally 7 megahertz with a, um, a low pass, say not low pass sorry, a, um, a lower sideband um, intelligence and this is where our crystal filter is sitting so what I want to do, I need to transpose this information coming in up in frequency to have the intelligence in the lower sideband um, in just inside our pass band uh, of our crystal filter. So uh, to do that, um, I'm going to work out what the beat frequency oscillator needs to be for a start, and then I can work out the um, the variable frequency oscillator. So um, assuming you know either way, but we'll do it this way. Assuming that our lower sideband information is sitting in this pass band here of 2100 hertz, uh, in order to beat that information with our beat frequency oscillator to produce audio frequency, 
I need to have it sitting on the high side. It's on the high side because I'm using additive um, mixing here. So in other words, um, my variable frequency oscillator, as we'll see in a sec, is sitting down here somewhere around 2 megs. So 2 plus 7 equals 9. Um, so at the moment, uh, in order to recover that intelligence, I need to have the beat frequency oscillator sitting at the middle or the center frequency for the crystal filter, 9 megahertz, plus half of the bandwidth. So as we see here, 9 megahertz plus 2100 hertz divided by 2. And then I need to add a little bit more because the lowest frequency that we'll be having in this lower sideband is going to be around 300 hertz. That's what that little gap there is. So I need to add another 300 hertz. So that beat frequency there is 9001350 hertz. So just, just slightly above 9 megahertz. So in order to transpose this signal here up and up and up and up to align with that, my variable frequency oscillator, which is going into the first mixer, needs to be the beat frequency oscillator minus frequency. Um, like I say, that, that's the way I, I explained it. Um, one could argue you can go the other way around, but for, this is the sort of the way I do it. So right or wrong, that's what it is. So again, by mixing in our first mixer, we need to transpose this by mixing up into this area here. So in other words, make that 7 align with the 9, which means that lower sideband intelligence sits just nice and neatly inside our pass band for the, uh, the crystal filter. So again, 9 megs, um, which is the center frequency, plus half the bandwidth, plus another 300 hertz is a starting point for the beat frequency oscillator. And then, as I just said, the variable frequency oscillator, which we mix in our first mixer, is the beat frequency oscillator frequency minus our frequency we're tuned to. So that frequency there, that VFO frequency, is what, not, is what we now see going into our first mixer. So coming out of that is that uh, transposed 9 megs um, intermediate frequency. Uh, this relay here, uh, in conjunction with, this, with the radio on the, on the output of the second IF amp, will be used in due course um, to, sh oops, sorry, to share um, this first IF amp, the mixer, and the second IF amp between transmit and receive. So we're going to give that a go, um, and uh, we'll see how we go. Um, for now, just ignore the switches. Again, that's just switching the output between uh, or providing the crystal filter with the output of that IF amplifier um, or a 50 ohm resistor. Coming through our crystal filter and then into our second IF amp, that's the, uh, the MC1350, and the output of that straight through the stage, or straight through that little link there, into our product detector, another ADE-1. Um, it's getting a... Uh, it's VFO input, um, we call the beat frequency oscillator, as you know, um, to basically beat with our, or mix with our IF to produce through the grey wire there, uh, our audio frequency. And then that audio frequency is disappearing up through here uh, into our audio frequency amplifier. So, like I say, reconfigured now as a, a super heterodyne receiver, uh, RF here, um, IF and then coming out as our audio frequency. So what I wanted to do, um, I'm going to, we're not transmitting anymore, so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to um, crank up the volume, and that's currently with our antenna connected. So I want to just dis disconnect the antenna. So we do get a reduction in uh, noise volume, which is good. Um, there's still a bit of noise there, um, so that's being produced from within the circuitry. Um, again, I, I'm I don't have enough experience to say if that's good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but what I've done now by having these switches sort of located around the place, we can sort of work out um, what parts of the circuit are contributing to um, to that noise. So. Um, what I may do is, uh, for a start, I'm going to turn that switch off there, which is going to disconnect the input of the crystal filter from, from the output. So by flicking that switch there, 
I'm now switching into the circuit to the input of this crystal filter, uh, 50 ohms. So that 50 ohms is going through an impedance matching transformer, uh, which is then transforming that 50 ohms up to the required 500 ohms for the crystal filter. So I can crank the, or crank the volume up here, right up. And we can see here we've got a little bit of high frequency noise. Um, this pot here is that variable gain for the 1350. So you can see there, so that's what the AGC will be using, or in, in this case of the uh, the pot will be the, the manual IF gain. And then as you go past that point where it's at maximum gain, no matter how much you rotate any more, uh, it's still the same. So um, suffice to say, this circuit here, this MC1350, um, is introducing a small, well, an amount, I'll call it that, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's a lot or not, um, of uh, high frequency um, hiss, noise, whatever you want to call it. Um, if, I now, if I now introduce the first IFM, in fact, if I've touched that, you can sort of hear the noise coming up, it's my finger providing a bit of an antenna through here. If I now flick that switch, we've now introduced the first IF amplifier and if I was to if I was to flick the switch here we've now disconnected the output of the antenna amplifier from the input of the the mixer and again if I was to touch that antenna there so I'm now providing uh, an RF source to be able to the whole radio so if you listen carefully then you can hear if I just flick that again we have some high frequency noise, flick that, and we're introducing a little bit of uh, low frequency noise, which is probably going to be uh, shot noise uh, coming in from that first IF amplifier. And then if I was to flick the switch here, um, I'd now introduce the antenna amplifier into the circuit, and a small, a small increase there in noise again. Uh, again, probably more than likely shot noise coming in from uh, that uh, that um, antenna amplifier there. And then if I was to connect the antenna back up again, over the back, we get a, a quite a significant increase in noise. So that's, you know, warts and all. Um, as someone said, warts and all, that's the circuit um, as it is. Um, like I say, I don't have probably enough experience to say that is uh, good, bad, or indifferent. So um, we'll leave it there. Um, some other observations. Uh, got a couple of birdies. So I think we have one sitting down at um, just over 7 megs. So if I was to go um, up to 10 megs, race it down to here somewhere. There it is there. So just got to... Now I'll just disconnect that antenna. So there's a um, bit of a birdie there. Um, there is another one sitting up. In fact, I'll just raise up to. I'll crank that down a bit. Up to uh, seven point two. So seven. So we've got another one sitting up there. Seven two zero one. And then uh, that's pretty well all that I could find at this stage of the game. Um, I don't think there's anything lower than that. Possibly 77 there. No, nothing there. So just say, uh, like I say, a couple of birdies there. Um, I haven't done any maths to work out where they're coming from. If it's the, uh, if it's two times the local oscillator minus the IF coming through the. Um, coming through the pass band of the bandpass filter. Like I say, haven't done any maths to try and work out where that's coming from and, and what it is. Um, personally, I don't find it too annoying, but uh, you know, like I say, this is a warts and all uh, assessment of the configuration. So um, I'll put my hand up and say it's there. Um, the IF amp is certainly, or the AF amp is, 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 is deadly quiet. So if I was to turn off the output of the IF amplifier, as the input into the mixer there. So now just introducing a 50 ohms to what would have been the RF port for the uh, product detector and crank the volume right up. Um, it's, it's quiet.
So that uh, audio frequency amplifier is certainly introducing nothing. Um, another interesting observation, uh, you recall on the first IFM, we had that little trim pot there that was providing um, a varying current through that diode. Uh, interesting enough, need very, very little gain for the radio to be quite sensitive. So that's interesting. So we've got oodles again to play around with in that first IFM. Um, again, just just an observation there. So um, I'm not quite sure what else I want to do for this one. So this was again just a a, a, a first look, warts and all um, assessment of the radio. Um, I'm just going to go back to uh, let's turn that back on again. So those are all those are all on. Like I say, the grey line hasn't come in yet. So. No, nothing, nothing there to listen to, I'm afraid. No, so nothing there, so uh, unfortunately nothing to listen to. Um, so I'm going to say 73 is there, um, more than welcome and, and open to constructive feedback. Um, I've said that many times in these videos. Uh, if, if someone wants to try something or look at something, then um, please sing out. Uh, again, the reason why uh, these are all built in modules, it just makes it nice and easy to swap things out. So, for example, um, I don't think I'm overdriving that um, AD-1 as a product detector, but there's nothing stopping us from swapping that out for, say, an SBL-1, or maybe swapping out the amplifier for something else down course. Um, that's the whole idea of these radios, is, is, to, is to play around, have them um, as modules, swap things in and out. Uh, just to see and uh, to make things uh, bigger and better. But anyway, um, like I say, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, any comments or feedback or anything else, please sing out. Um, otherwise, I will continue to have a bit of a play around and hopefully tonight, once the sun starts to go down, uh, we will have um, some signals to uh, actually listen to as opposed to using um, the dummy load. Okay, I'll say 73s. Cheers all.